What is up guys, Charlie Pang is here. Welcome to another t-shirt design episode. This is episode, uh, what are we on actually? I almost forgot, it's episode 12. And today we're gonna be creating an awesome chrome text t-shirt design. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Without further ado, let's open up Photoshop and get started. Wait a minute, hold the front door. Did you guys actually know that I have a second YouTube channel? If you don't know that, you probably didn't watch my last video, but I have a second YouTube channel called I Have Charlie, and that one is basically going to be my main channel from now on. I'm going to try to build that one up now, obviously since this one is already pretty successful. I wanna to try to build another YouTube channel up. But with that one, I'm gonna be talking about how I make YouTube videos, kinda of helping other YouTubers out and learn from what I've learned, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna be teaching things like audio, video, um, even how to take your own photos, all that good stuff on that channel. So if you guys are into that, go ahead and uh, subscribe using the link in the description below. And if you guys wanna know exactly what I use to film with, I linked all of my gear in the description below as well. So with that out of the way, let's get started now, finally. Before we get started, let me show you how to set up your document correctly so you guys understand what goes into it. Um, obviously this document is a square document. I have it at 2500 by 2500, 300 DPI. But if you were to actually want to print this and print it on, let's say a t-shirt design, you'd go up to file new and then you go to pixels. You wanna change that to inches and then you just go 14 by 18 and then make sure that resolution's at 300. The color mode really doesn't matter, trust me, it doesn't matter um, unless your screen printer or whatever asks specifically for CMYK, then make sure that is in CMYK. But for mine, I like to keep it in RGB. Other than that, choose your shirt color under background contents. For me, I'm gonna do a black t-shirt so we can hit that and then hit create and then it's gonna pull up your new document and you could start designing. But for me, I'm gonna use the square one for now. It's just easier on my CPU basically. So anyway, um, we're ready to start designing. So we're gonna do a Chrome text effect basically, which is really, really easy. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. The first thing I would like to do before making this effect happen is I wanna go to my background layer and I wanna invert this. So I'm gonna do Command I. When you invert something, you're basically choosing the opposite color, right? So I had white, the opposite of white is black. So now it's black and that's all we need to do right there. And the next thing we need to do is hit T on our keyboard. That goes to the type tool. So let's go ahead and type something out. Now you can use any font you want, but I'm gonna use a very specific font because I want this to be nice and bold. So I got Chrome typed out here and this font actually looks pretty fire. I'm not going to lie. Let's go with like a Times New Roman or something. Something really universal that everybody has. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna switch it up today, guys. Everybody and their freaking mother has this font on their computer, so that's why we're gonna use it. So go to Times New Roman Bold, and that's the one that we are going to use. And I'm going to change the kerning of everything. I don't mind everything touching, that's fine. That sounded weird, didn't it? <laughs> Anyway, before adding any warps or anything like that, I wanna add the gradient overlay first to give it that chrome effect because what happens is if I warp it first and then add that chrome effect, the effect's not gonna warp with the text. I hope that makes sense. Let me demonstrate. I'm gonna go down to FX, FX, and then we're gonna go to gradient overlay. And I already have mine pre-selected because I've already done this, but basically what you do is you just go to gradient overlay and then copy this exact um, format here, okay? You can slide all of these colors around to affect the design in different ways. Like I didn't like the top part there, so I'm just gonna slide it a little bit. Actually, we're gonna slide everything over because I don't like how the top looks right there. The key to making this chrome effect really look good is to make sure that there's a variation, a gradient of colors, and have some of them touching. So for instance, I have the black and the white overlapping, creating a harsh cut between both black and white, and that's giving it that chrome look. So again, you just wanna make sure you're kinda of thinking about that when adding your colors. And it's also important to note that you can choose any color you want, but for me, I like to add the color later if I add color. From there, you wanna check bevel and emboss, or however you say that, I don't even know, and you wanna make the style is on inner bevel and you want to make sure the technique is chisel hard and this is personal preference so have fun with it guys mess with it see what works for you um, but for me I like the chisel hard it looks really good and then from there you just want to make sure you change the depth you can go all the way to hundred percent if you would like to it's really completely up to you and then the only other thing that you really need to mess with is the shading and this is all trial and error so um, for me I like to make sure the gloss contour is on this little wavy one right here and then you just kind of mess with the direction of the lighting until you are happy with what you see. What I recommend you guys do is just mess with all the contours and see which one you like best but I actually like this other one right here so I'm gonna go with this one but I, I want to make sure I find the right shadow 
All right, so I chose an angle of negative 143 uh, degrees, and it's also at a altitude of 21 degrees. So you can copy those exact numbers if you want to, but your text is probably gonna be different than mine. So just mess with it, see what works best for your specific design. Now at this point, I like to duplicate it once to make sure that I have a duplicate copy in case I screw up anything. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Now that I have that duplicate copy, what I wanna do is add an inner glow. And this is where we're gonna kinda make the design pop a little bit more. So we're gonna make sure the inner glow is on white. We're gonna take the opacity and go 100% with it. And from there, we don't really wanna mess with too much besides the choke, the size, and the contour once again. And this is the contour that I found looks really good. And then you can kinda mess with the jitter, the noise, and everything like that. But um, again, it's all up to you. I kinda like this one a lot. When you zoom in on the design, you're gonna be able to see exactly what this is doing. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and mess with the contour just to make sure that it's kinda what I want. I think this one looks pretty cool right here. So now I just wanna kinda of mess with the, the noise level. I don't want it to be too noisy, but I do wanna add a little noise there. Really the goal I have here is to add a little bit of shine to the edges so it stands out a little bit more so the design doesn't get lost with the background. That's really the only uh, reason why I'm adding this. All right, so this little wavy one looks pretty good because it's adding that white glow to the outside, which is what I wanted. So we're gonna hit okay. Before adding any other effect, what I wanna do is delete that bottom layer and actually duplicate this one more time since we added that inner glow. I realized I kinda duplicated it too soon. So now we have two copies of the text and I can convert this one to a smart object. And then from here, what we could do is we could go up to filter and then we're gonna go to filter gallery and we're gonna add a chrome filter gallery effect, okay? So once you go to the filter gallery, you just wanna go all the way down to sketch, the folder sketch, and then you wanna select chrome. And then from here, just mess with the settings. And again, this is all personal preference. It really depends on what you're going for here. So for me, I'm gonna go about right there with that. This effect's going to do about two things for our design. It's gonna add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of randomness, which is what you want with a chrome effect. So um, this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna hit okay. So now you can toggle that chrome effect on and off and let's go ahead and unhide that copy at the bottom. Now what we can do is mess with the blend mode of this effect and see what it does to our design basically. Again, we're kind of focusing on contrast a little bit. What I wanna do is try adding a screen blend mode to it and then just lowering the opacity a little bit. If you wanted this effect to be a little bit more intense, you can always duplicate it a few times too or change the blend mode to something else. Um, but I actually think this looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna lower the opacity a little bit and that looks really good. So I'm gonna group both of these layers together now and then make a duplicate copy. And if you don't know your shortcuts, I would probably learn them guys. It really helps whether you're on Windows or Mac. Learn your shortcuts. Take 30 minutes out of your day to learn the shortcuts. It really does help. Or write them down on a piece of paper and put them next to you. It's going to help you follow along much easier. Now we're on to the final stage. So I'm gonna do Command T and then right click and we're gonna go to Warp and we're gonna add a Arc Lower Warp to it. And we just wanna raise that bottom point up like that. And then if you want to add color, you can add color. If you wanna add lens flares, you can add lens flares. But this is basically how you do it. To finish this effect off, I wanna to go to Google and type in lens flare and just copy any of these to Photoshop. And you're gonna see why in a second. We're gonna copy that to Photoshop and we're just going to change the blend mode to screen. All right, so I have that lens flare, but I wanna actually go to adjustments and desaturate that so it matches. Before I mock this up, I wanna hit Command A on my keyboard, copy everything, Shift Command V to paste that in place. And we're gonna hide everything now and then I'm gonna get rid of the black by going to blending options and then holding an option, splitting that arrow and then kind of blending this in just like this. Just copy what I'm doing because this is hard to explain but basically we're taking all the black out, okay? If I hide the background layer now, you can see what we just did there. And now when I convert this to a smart object, it's not going to have a background and then I can actually add some noise now which will make this design look really cool. So let's go ahead and add a bunch of noise to this. And then from here, we can actually copy this and then just paste it on our mock-up of choice. And this is actually my mock-up that I made. If you guys wanna purchase it, you guys can go to my website, charliepangus.com. I have it for sale. Anyway, um, so now I just wanna scale this down. And then from there, I just wanna make sure the shirt is a little bit darker, just like so. And then we can change the highlights if we want to, to really make this pop. This mock-up in particular is so extremely easy to use. It's extremely versatile, and I give you guys plenty of control over the mock-up with this one. So again, if you guys wanna pick it up, charliepangus.com. That concludes T-shirt design episode 12. If you guys like this episode, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you aren't already. Guys, I had so much fun making this. Keep creating and keep being awesome, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Going
was never lied, now you see us blowing up People used to front, now you see them showing up So what's up, I have been down and now but look Keep it a buck, I don't Always been one up on all of these They be trying to front for all of these I ain't got time cause they all in they feelings I used to